Hey everybody, Bandicoot Commando here, and welcome back to Ratchet and Clank. Last time, I was on Planet Indacto at Megalopolis, and I showed off pretty much a lot of the stuff you can get once you have all the platinum bolts, and once you have all the weapons upgraded and modded, and all the skill points, and yeah. So today, oh shit, I forgot, okay. So today, I'm gonna show off a little secret, which is why I'm, oh great. Why I am wasting time because I completely forgot I had to go through all this again. So, we're gonna go to a little secret area that can only be found on this planet, and there are two ways of getting to it. One of the ways, which I'm gonna try to use if I can hurry, is that if your PS2 clock is on 3 o'clock a.m., it or at least, you know, close to it, the area is, ac is accessible. And I'm gonna try and get in using this method. I've set my PS2 clock to... Oh shit, come on. Fix. I set my PS2 clock to... Uh, to 2.55 just to give me a little extra time to make it there. So, all you need to do is here on... Here on Bolden, once you get by here, get past these guys and get here specifically. Make sure you clear out all the enemies so you can have a safe way of getting in without them interrupting. Well, the little guys won't be no trouble for me. Looks like it's almost 3 o'clock. So, this thing will be activated by at least 3 a.m. Now, if you mess up, there's another way of getting in. Don't worry, so... Okay, where is that one getting hurt so I can shut it up? Where is he? Is he back there? That's gonna get on my nerves awfully fast unless I kill him. Where are you? Are you in the fountain? This is really annoying me and I'm I want to talk about other things. There. Now, I don't know if it's close to 3 a.m. yet, but I'm going to just stay here until that, till it says so. It should be from what it says. Don't worry, if I can't get in through this way, I know another way of getting in. So what I wanted to say, before I had to search around for that little guy making noise, is um, a few things I wanted to say. One. The Spyro Reignited Trilogy. I can't wait. Just, here we go. The Insomniac Museum. I'll show the other way of getting in after we're done here. So, um, first, I gotta kill all the enemies. Like I said, it has to be at 3 a.m., but there is another way of getting in. What else is in here, by the way? Yeah, this is where you're all on... At the map, by the way. Just showing. Okay. Uh, let's get going. I've never been to this Insomniac Museum, but can't wait to see what it's like. Here we go. And we're in our ship. Oh, that's the other thing. Uh, the ship. Um, I chose the Insomniac Moon color. Planet Burbank. It's Earth, and Burbank is like, you know, an actual place. Hello. Help message. This is Mike Stout. I'm a designer at Insomniac Games. Hi, welcome to the Insomniac Museum. Here you'll see some of the great things that never quite made it into the game, and you'll learn a little bit about life here at Insomniac Games. Thank you. Uh, who are you? Hello, my name is Brian Allgaier, the design director at Insomniac Games. 
These floating spherical monstrosities are the elusive gravity spheres, which were originally going to be included in Silver City. They proved to be too difficult, and a bit nauseating, to be included. They are preserved here for posterity. Swing shot up to try running around one, and then swing shot again to get off the sphere. Okay, so I'm guessing um, gravity spheres, I'm assuming the way they work is, whoa! Are my boots even equipped? Yeah, they are. I'm assuming the way they would have worked, though, is that they they probably would have not had... Oh, okay, I could see why it's nauseating. Whoa. -ho -ho. Um, I could clearly see why. It's cool, but it is kind of screwy to look at. Oh, yeah, you can't get off. You have to swing shot off, so... Uh, get, get, uh, I'm getting motion sickness just looking at this. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's see what's around here. What's this? Hi there, my name's Tim Trespass. I'm a gameplay programmer here at Insomniac Games. I'm a Leo from Washington, D.C. I like anime and shiny objects. This car was originally going to be included in the battle with the giant robot on Snivlack. Unfortunately, its lack of heavy weaponry proved its bane. It now calls the Insomniac Museum its home. Yeah, this is what I talked about in the one- I can get in it? This is what I was talking about with the, uh, fight on Snivlack. Let's so see if you can drive it. You can- Oh my god! <laughs> uh, how do you shoot? I can't shoot? I can- I can go backwards? I can't shoot. I could strafe? What? Wow. I, I don't care what those things are. I'm just going to have fun driving around in this thing. <laughs> oh, they should have actually used this in the boss battle. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, it can move up and down. Yeah, Dad's with me, by the way. Just witnessing this. Yeah, I can't shoot or anything. It's just... Wait, wait, I can lower. Can I go? Yeah, it's like a hover car. Yeah. Why don't we keep it and just use it to get around faster? So, uh, yeah, what what was in here? Hiya! This is Oliver Wade, the animation director here at Insomniac Games. The Three-Headed Hydra was a big cut from Ratchet and Clank 1. It was originally intended as a mini-boss on Pokitaru. Ratchet battled this beast whilst riding a boat through blowfish infested waters. However, it didn't end up being that much fun at all. Okay, so... Uh, the museum talks about just, not just things in this game, but, oh, you face through it. But things from the first game as well, so... Kinda glad they didn't use this thing. What is the point of the metal here? Like, is there, like, a point to this? Is it just here for... just... What? Um... I'm a bit confused why I'm on the... On the wall. Again, I've never been in the museum, so... It's new to me. Okay, how about we uh, just get back in our little car and... Uh, I still wish you knew how to... I wish this thing could actually shoot, though. I'm gonna have to ditch this thing eventually, but still. What's in here? What is it, like a basketball court? My name is Chris Town, and I'm a tester here at Insomniac Games. Here at Insomniac, we're so hopped up on caffeine that we bounce off the walls! You can do the same with these gravity ramps! Oh, so that's what they're here for. Well, uh, no thanks. I already was on the few walls, so... No thanks. Again, just I wish they kept this in the game somehow and actually made use of it better. I love the idea and <laughs> the speedometer and all that's a nice touch. Oh yeah, there's no there's no enemies, no breakables. I can't even use my wrench. What's this? Oh, hello. Who are you? Hi, I'm Leslie Matheson. I'm a designer here at Insomniac Games. This was intended to be the water system for Ratchet and Clank. However, as even this little patch of water taxes the game engine to its limits, a modified and severely optimized form was what eventually made it into the game. To see this patch in action, press circle. 
Oh. I... Wow. They wanted to use almost realistic water effects. I can see why. Because, yeah, it, it's hard to do that sort of... Th like, back then, for the PS2, it was hard to make uh, realistic water. At least the GameCube and the Xbox were powerful enough to do that sort of thing. Well, that's neat. Sorry, vehicle. I'm going to have to leave you here because... I can't take you everywhere. Uh, what's over here? What is this? Greetings, this is Oliver Wade, the animation director at Insomniac Games doing an atrocious British accent. This is the original Gadgetron vendor from Ratchet & Clank 1. The official reason it was cut had something to do with saving memory. The real reason has a lot to do with squirrels, hacksaws, and our lawyers. I can say no more because I am no longer able to do this accent. <laughs> So, oh, I can see how it works. Yeah, the guy's just sitting here. And, they, and then he's like calling over to, he might call over to Ratchet and be like, Oh, hey, I got some new weapons here for you and everything. And yeah, it's kind of cool though. But I think the official vendors work better. Is that all or is there more? Yeah, whoa. Um, before I, wow. There's more to this than I thought. What's all this junk? Hey, it's Tim. This monstrosity was intended to be a boss battle fought on the jet ski gadget. Seeing as the jet ski never made it in the Ratchet and Clank, however, neither did this boss. May he rest in pieces. Hmm, jet skis. What's the story to that? Hi, my name is Sean Whistler, and I'm a tester here at Insomniac Games. This guy was originally intended to be an enemy in the ill-fated jet ski level that never made it into Ratchet and Clank 1. A moment of silence, please, for this gentle giant, torn down in his prime. So, apparently there was meant to be a jet ski level, a water world level in Ratchet and Clank. Huh. Interesting. Uh, before I go see what that is, what's over here? Was this? Yeah, this is where we were with the vehicle. Okay. So, uh, what's this scary looking thing, Tim? Sean here. Don't oh, worry, Sean. Ratchet. You wouldn't have had to fight this monster even if he did make it into the game. This giant bug ship was intended to act as scenery only, flying from place to place to ensure high detail on buildings, while leaving the play area open. Huh. Why'd they have to remove it though? Like, not just time constraints. Oh! Man. Untextured things. Okay, so we were over here. Uh, anything more? I didn't really see the whole video to the- What? What? I don't like the looks of this. Um, effects, I guess. So what's up over here? Oh, okay. Uh, well, first, let me at least see what's up here. Hi, my name is Tony Garcia, and I'm a programmer at Insomniac Games. This little demonstration allows you to create your own shot effect using the magic of debug technology. You can edit the shot size and color, and then watch the bandit shoot it at the block man. Don't feel too sorry for the block man, though. He's evil. <laughs> Alright, uh, what does this do? It affects the colors. Oh, it's a debug, okay, um... Um... I don't know how debugging works, just saying. I'm, I'm just fiddling with shit that I don't understand. Okay, I could see a little bit of a difference to the, uh, to his shot, but. Let's see what happens if we put it on zero. Oh, it's changing color now. And what happens if this is on zero? It's becoming like very small and deadly looking. Now it's just a simple projectile. Okay. Yeah, I see how it works. I, I'm just not. Make your own effect.
Ooh, woo, that's nice looking. That's a cool shot. Let's make it thick. Looks like a person being shot out, like a little creature being shot out of that thing. It's hurting my eyes though, just trying to look at it right. Texture rot. I don't think he can hurt me. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, so th this is what the shot looks like that I made. Wow, that looks pretty neat. And what's this, about explosions, I guess? Tony Garcia here. This wonder of an explosion was created especially for Ratchet & Clank 2. Its extreme versatility allowed it to creep into many different places in the game. You'll even see it in the electrolyzer puzzles. Stand on the blue pad to make your own explosions. Okay. Again, I'm, I'm not used to debugging. I'm assuming this is the side. Oh yeah, I can see. Okay. Whoa boy, uh, number of moon rocks? Number of silvers. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, let's reduce the molten rocks a bit. And maybe the number of clouds. No, no, too much red. Too much red. There we go, now it's becoming a little yellowish. Let's make it more green. There we go, and add some more blue. Yeah, get a purple color going if we can. Wait for it. I'm sure we can get it. Now it's becoming white. Maybe we might have to add a little bit of red. I'm terrible at colors, apparently. Distortion. Oh, I see. I can see the little effects. Shell. I don't know what shell is. Shake camera? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. That's a cool little thing to do. Uh, anything back here, maybe? Uh, no, we were back here. I'm already kind of lost on what we have seen and what we haven't seen. I think we've been everywhere at this point. Let me look around to make sure. Is there a... No, there's no map here. Wait. Planet... Danato... <laughs> Planet Danatopia. <laughs> the name of Dan. Okay. Okay. Very funny, Dan. Very funny. Okay. Um... Uh, at this point, I think we have seen everything in this game, or well, I don't want to say everything, but I'm pretty sure, okay, no, there's still more to see, okay, I'm just kind of lost on where to go. Ooh, now what is this thing? Fire? Tony Garcia here. Using these three blue pads, you can edit the three particle effects in the center of the room. Go ahead, play around with them. You can achieve some truly great effects this way. Okay, let's see what we do. Oh, I see, okay. Again, I'm no debugger pr programmer. I at least know certain things. Lifespan. Make it bright red. Yeah, there we go. More red. More red. There we go. Let's add some slight green and get rid of some of that blue. There we go, that looks like true fire. Rotation speed, how about we up that up a bit. Oh, that's the visibility, I guess. There we go. I still don't know what I'm doing, I'm just having fun. Messing around, gravity. Whoa! Uh, sure, yeah, let's keep it like that. Uh... Nah. Yeah. No, there. Low spawn timer. I can't do anything with the spawn timer. What's this one? Is it the same thing? Oh, it's with the wind. Yeah, this is just messing around with the wind and smoke and other things like that. Whoa! What? Okay, um, what's this all about? 
Hello, this is Pedro Hastinas. I am a gameplay programmer at Insomniac Games. This was created to test screen buffer effects. Screen buffer effects are used to create things like distortion bubbles and heat hazing. This, however, ends up looking like a hall of mirrors. Can you guess why? Uh... Because of the distortion? Yeah, it's like a never-ending, never-ending, like, frame thing. What's up here? It's a ship, but what's this have to do with anything? This dummy was created to test the new reaction system, which we added to Ratchet & Clank 2. With this system, enemies would always be sure to react appropriately to being damaged without a ton of hassle. Go ahead and hit him. He won't mind. Yeah. See what you think of this. Or better yet, let's see what you think of this. I guess the speedometer thing was like an early test of vehicles. <laughs> okay. Um, where haven't we tried? Okay, that's where the little explosions were. Okay, I've noticed we've not been over here really. Because I'm noticing some things over there. So, what is this? Um, hold on. Before I check what that is, what is with this? Ooh. Okay, this is really going to test my skills here. Ah, oh, shit. I was doing good, though. Come on, I want to see what's behind here, or what doing this is part of. Ah. Come on, I could do this. Ah, shit. Come on! Let me do this. Ah, oh, man, it keeps throwing me off. I'll get it. Just, I need. Nearly got me there. Okay, I gotta remember that one. Oh. See, when you keep hearing that sound when they go through the, the connectors, it just throws you off. Oh, it got me again. That one got me again. Okay. Come on, I can do this. Oh, that time you got me. I'm not giving up. Never give up. Never surrender. Gotcha! Oh, we get to see what's in there. Okay. Well, first off, what... Um, whoa, uh... I want to save that for last, if all honesty, so... Uh, before we do anything else, let me just, uh, look around over here again. What was over here? Okay, that was the smoke... ...thing, so... Over here is this. Okay, so what's this? My name is Corey Stockton and I'm a designer here at Insomniac Games. This monstrous robotic squid was created for one of the Ratchet & Clank 2 prototype levels. Since that level never made it into the finished game, however, neither did poor Squiddy. Ah, oh, poor Squiddy. Poor Squidward. I kind of like and do not like what I see out there, but um, first, I think we're almost done with what we're seeing. What's in this room? 
Hello, what is that? Chris here. This helmet was the original model for the Hollow Guys gadget in Ratchet and Clank 1. It was eventually changed to the handheld model you see in the finished game for reasons unknown. However, we once again suspect it was due to the squirrels with hacksaws. So this thing was a helmet? But in the game itself, it's like some just little control thing. What's this? Hello, I'm Carl Grande, the QA manager here at Insomnia Games. This gadget was originally intended for Ratchet and Clank 1. Unfortunately, it didn't make the cut, and so never saw the light of day. It now makes its home here at Insomniac Museum. Gone, but not forgotten. Seems to be some kind of vehicle. Must be the jet ski for that jet ski level they wanted to do. Anything else? Yeah, what is that thing? I can drive it, but before I touch it, what's up over here? Mike Stout here. Have you ever wanted to create your own infiltrator puzzle? Well, now you can. Just stand on the blue pad and play around with the values a bit. Confound your friends and amaze your enemies. Uh, where's the blue pad at? Oh, okay. Okay, how about I just... Oops. Here, I'm gonna... I think I know what I'm doing to make it. And... I think that's it. Let's, uh... See how it works. Okay. Ooh, this is gonna be tough, and I made it so random, I don't even know what I'm doing. But I wanna see if I can beat my own puzzle I made. Shit! Oh, I was so close. I was probably close. Nope. Nope. No. That's if I go dead. Okay, dead end. Come on, let me beat my own puzzle I made here. ain't right. I think I messed it up. Hold on, let it reset. Damn it. I was close again. Okay, now I got it. I think I got it now. Yeah, oh, come on! Come on! I can do this! Let me do it! I'm already enjoying myself more than I should on this. I don't really like these infiltrator puzzles in all honesty. Come on, if I made it, I sh certainly should be able to beat my own puzzle. Even though I have no clue how to have made it in the first place, because I'm no programmer. Ah, so close. Every time I'm so close. But I got it. This time I'm sure I got it. Gotcha! Okay, let's not do that again. Alright, what's up with this thing? Okay, it's just another ship. I can't even... I can't fly with it. I guess these were meant for the first game, if anything. 
All right, what's up with out here? These teleporters were originally intended to go into several of the levels. Due to time constraints, however, they were eventually cut. So what's this thing? Sto Whoa! To active. Oh, this thing? Um. What? Where are we? I'm a little weirded out here. Brian Allgaier here. These escalating rows of blocks were used when we were in the early stages of creating Ratchet and Clank 1. They were used to test Ratchet's jump heights and jump distances to see which would be the most fun. Okay, so... So yeah, Ratchet can't jump that high, really. Oh, I see. I mean, yeah, we could still stretch jump at least, but if it comes to regular jumping, we'd have to glide our way across some of these. I see how it works though. One jump. One jump, see? One jump. One jump. This would probably require two jumps. Two jumps. This one would require gliding. Gliding again. This one's a stretch jump. This next one's a stretch jump. I'm not sure if we can make these last two with stretch jumps. Nope. He can't go any further between 11 to 12 meters. Millimeters, I guess. And the same goes to the heights here. So one jump, 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 jump. Okay, that's a ledge grab. That's a ledge grab. That's a ledge grab as well. That's a double jump. Nope, that's for a stretch jump. This is also for a stretch jump. And Ratchet can't go any higher. Or no, he can. I didn't know he was going to reach that. But it's from here. He can't reach. Okay. Let me guess. The same thing with jump height. Brian Allgaier here. These walls, which range from narrow to wide, were used to test wall kick distances for the original Ratchet and Clank. Oh, okay. Well, let's test it. And let's see what's through here, too. Nothing? Alright, let's see how far Ratchet can wall jump. Uh, I'm getting somewhere. I think this is the furthest he can go. Okay, let's try over here. See how high we can go. Okay, that's a little better. Okay, here he can do it. Yep. And then from here, he should be able to make these next two. Come on. Nice wall jumping skills. Alright, this is an easy wall jump. Only two left. This is yet another easy wall jump. I never I don't think there's never a point in the game where you can wall jump rapidly between walls like that. Okay, at least Ratchet doesn't stop automatically when he hits something. Okay, now let's find out what this big thing is. Alright, now what? Brian Allgaier here. These ramps get steeper and steeper as you go on. They were used to test how Ratchet's feet respond to different floor angles. It also helped establish that a 45 degree angle was the sharpest that Ratchet should be able to walk up. Okay. 10. 15. 20. 25. 30. 35. 40 and 45 uh, 50 come on yep I can't go any higher up here yep can't go up any further there 
So what's the point of this thing just sticking out though? Is it just here? Or does it actually have a purpose? I've wasted enough time, I should say, but still looking around and enjoying myself. I still need to show off the other way of getting in here, so... Uh, I don't think there's anything else I can do. Yeah, this is just here to be here. And yeah, I can't go up any higher from here, so... I think it's time we got out of this weird tower. Whoa, that was sudden. Um, that's if I fall. Nothing else. What happens if we do fall? Takes us back here. I think that's everything we could see in the museum, because I'm pretty sure at this point, I have shown everything that is in this museum as far as I know. Because I don't think there's anything else left to show even as I go back here oh my name is Corey Stockton and I'm a designer here at Insomniac Games you may recognize this drill from Ratchet and Clank 1 it was held by a large construction worker who gives you a lump of raritanium this is originally a weapon called the Revolverator Ratchet would strike enemies with it and then spin them over his head yeah I already explained how this weapon was meant to be in the game. It's in the final game though, with the guy using it as a drill. Okay, so we've been there, so we missed that at least. Good thing I noticed it. Anything else I'm missing? Anything else? There's the smoke effects. Uh, that's the mirror thing. I feel like I'm gonna sneeze. I need to sneeze. Come on. Let me sneeze. There's the squiddy. Maybe there's more stuff back here. Okay, there's the vehicle thing. Maybe we didn't see what was back here exactly, so... Okay, that's the infiltrator thing. What's this? Hello? Hey, there's something else back there, too. What is this? Hello. This is Pedro Hastinas. I am a gameplay programmer at Insomniac Games. This little widget was used to test our new chunk system. We lovingly call it the corn system. Notice how all the breakables... But Excuse me! Well, that's corn working hard for you. Give it a whack and see what it does. Oh, okay. Achoo! Thank you. Finally, I've been wanting to sneeze. What's this thing? This is Mike Stout. I'm a designer at Insomniac Games. Fear the random robot NPC. This robot never made it into Ratchet and Clank 1 because of the fabled Day of Poultry, when chickens swarmed over our offices and pecked the computer, holding this mechanical darling to pieces. We were able to retrieve her eventually, though. Huh. Looks more like an alien, if anything. Yeah, I should say, I'm not feeling too well, but I'll be better soon. I think that's it. Pretty sure that's it now. Unless there's more that I am not aware of for some reason. Okay, we, we know what that is by now. I think that's it. No? Uh, yeah. I think that's it. That is it. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Because there's the Hydra monster. There's the vehicle. And... Here's the gravity spears. This is, yeah. I love how they scribbled the museum on there and someone spelled it wrong, apparently. Yeah, and, oh great, the magnet effect is in work here. Okay, yeah, that's it. We did it. That is everything in the Insomniac Museum. Wow. Why is... 
Oh, that's the water effect. Okay, uh, let's... Yeah, let's get out of here. I've spent way too much time in here, but... That was interesting, though. That was really interesting. I'm not done yet, though. I at least need to show off the other method of getting in, and then I'll stop, so... Alright, we're back on planet Bolden. We're back here at the ship. Okay, let me at least show the other method of getting in. So, the other way of getting into the museum without trying to change your PS2's clock setting. Or if you're on your PS3, changing your PS3's clock setting. Uh, the other way of getting in is with the grind rail section here. Okay, so what you'll need to do... So when you get to right around here, specifically up to this next area, purposely run into this and get knocked off, and then try to glide over to where the land is. So once you're over here, it is somewhat part of the map. There are some breakables here, but that's not what you're here for. Uh, go this way. Specifically to that building. Let me equip my boots. You need to specifically go to this building here. There are patches of missing ground of being untextured, so... Yeah, look out for that. Oh, okay. So what you do then is, uh, let's see. You go here... You should be able to find a way to phase through this. There's a way to, like, phase through the... There we go. Well... I really wasted my time trying again, but... At this point, I don't care. Okay, let's see. Okay. Maybe I did it wrong. Hold on. Okay, nope, nothing over here other than a lot of untextured, unfinished city, but I'm guessing that's because Insomniac didn't really intended for you to go over here, but seeing how you can still glitch your way through this. Okay, I think what you do is you go through, you gotta go this way. There we go, I found it. So then you gotta sort of jump in and reposition the camera. And then there you go, that's how you get in here. So if you don't want to set up your time system to 3 a.m., just do that. Uh, is this the one that, yep, that's the one that takes you to the museum. Now, does the other one take me out, or do I have to get out on my own? Yes, this one will take me out. Okay, I gotta get out of here. Alright, well, uh, with that, uh, I guess that's it. That will do for this episode. Well, there's one last thing. I can't even go back. I'm locked out. I'll just stop here, but before I end it, there's one more thing I gotta talk about. Well, more like two more things. Uh, three, now that I think of it. There are two... Er, yeah, there are some more unused things in this game that they don't mention. One of them being was that Clank was meant to have a, a torpedo system on the hydro pack. But that didn't make it into the game. There was supposed to be a weapon that... I believe if I remember how it worked... I don't remember how it worked exactly, but... I'll be sure to show images of these as well, but it shot, according to the Ratchet and Clank wiki, it shot fireballs similar to the Terminator, but I don't remember what it did exactly or its name. And then there's the fire boots. It's just that with them equipped, Ratchet would leave a trail of fire as he walked, but the idea is that if you make a little ring of fire circle around enemies, it would do lots of damage. And, uh, yeah, that is it. So, that will do for 
Ratchet and Clank going commando. I'm done. I've gotten everything I wanted to do on here. Out of the way. All complete. It's all done. So uh, as for what my next Let's Play will be, the only hint is that you'll see in the end slate. You'll see at the end of the video. So uh, yeah. That is it. And I will see you guys in my next Let's Play. Yeah. <laughs>